I'm sure you've all been there. You've loaded up Farming Simulator with the best intentions, the plans, exactly what you want to do. And, well, nothing goes right. If it can go wrong, it goes wrong. That was what happened in this episode. Nothing went right for me. I think everything just about turned to custard. But we've put it together. Hopefully I've made something enjoyable for you to show that uh, we don't just edit out all the bad bits. We keep them in there and it happens to the best of us. So sit back, relax, have a laugh at my expense if that's what you want to do. Uh, and leave a comment down below. What is your worst farming simulator experience? Because uh, this is going pretty close to being one of mine. So enjoy and let's get into it. Hello everyone, Arxie here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer on Chilliwack in British Columbia. Now before we get into the activities for today, I'd just like to wish everyone a very happy new year. We've obviously been away for a couple of weeks, hence the uh, lightness of content lately. We've been enjoying some R&R &R with the family, which is very nice. I'm feeling refreshed and ready to get back into some farming simulator and making videos and whatever it is that you guys enjoy. So we are back here today, we are jumping straight into doing some silage. Now I do know in the last video I said we'd probably look at getting into the farm build but I want to drive some equipment and uh, use some auto drive and course play and things like that. So we're going to skip the farm build. We do have to build a little bit though because we need to put some stave silos in for the silage. Uh, but I do just want to get into playing with some equipment. So with that being said, we are set up here. We've got the forage harvester out with the corn head on top on top on front uh, and then we've got the Kubota and the New Holland over here pulling the forage wagons now the reason we're using the forage wagons is they have the uh, side dump there side discharge on them and that will become clear as to why we need that when we get to using the stave silos and we have a blower and everything like that unfortunately I don't think we'll be able to use the truck purely because it has a pusher and, and a live floor and Everything comes out the back rather than out a side, as you can see there on both the trucks, regardless of which ones, those are the options. So we are stuck, or not so much stuck, we are limited to just using the two forage wagons. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly we can get this done or how long it is going to take to get the field sorted. Now we do have some auto drivers set up, now we're going to head off to field 203. So I'm going to send the forage harvester off there, we will jump over into the two tractors send them on their way and uh, we'll have a little bit of chat on the way over there and then once we get over there we'll get things set up and going. Now just as we drive along here behind the other equipment uh, I just wanted to talk about the auto drive course very quickly. This is a work in progress course, course by AZ Sparky. He shared this on the auto drive creators discord channel. Uh, I'll make sure I leave a link and invite to their discord down below so if you wanted to go and get it uh, you could grab it there as well. It is a work in progress. Uh, it covers most of the main roads and a lot of the yards and cell points, uh, but not any fields or anything like that. But it does make it easy, considering there's well over 100 fields on the map. It does make it easy for you to add in what it is that you want to do. Now, in terms of what we're going to be doing today, obviously we're harvesting some corn and making some silage. We do have Maze Plus installed and the corn is still fresh. So we are going to have fresh corn. Uh, or fresh silage out of this and that will require a specific type of silo. Now we do have some maize plus compatible stave silos installed. We're going to have to go and pick ourselves up a blower for that. Uh, we do have one of those that we can use and we're going to use that on the John Deere, the 40 series John Deere which we have back at the yard now. Uh, so we have all of that to set up. We also have to set up all the auto drive courses for the actual uh, forage wagons and also we have course play that we're going to use for the forage harvester so a bit of a uh, play around with some automation and things like that as well seeing how well we can get that to work uh, while doing some of the work ourselves at the same time but we're just coming up on the field now so we'll let everything get sorted get pulled in and uh, then we'll get things set up and going so we've just jumped here up into the Jaguar as we pull into the yard area. Obviously the main thing with this map that's a very distinguishable feature is that a lot of these areas don't actually have any farm entrances or anything like that, which is, uh, I've commented on it many times, but I do enjoy that. I think it's fantastic to give players the opportunity to create however they want. Uh, you could bring the entrance in wherever you like. We might do some landscaping to show that off, uh, but for now we might just leave it there. But let's get pulled up over here. 
I'm going to get things set up here with the forage harvester to get this all unfolded. Now I do recall this is a 9 metre wide header on the front so lots and lots of uh, width to pick up. It'll be interesting to see how quickly we can fill it up. Now we don't have any silage additive. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. We might pick some up when we head down to the store. Uh, we need to go down and pick up the blower so we can take the pickup down and grab that and we could grab some additive at that stage but for now we're just going to carry on without any. So I think before we set up the auto drive let's go ahead and firstly let's get things turned on and just make sure we can harvest this maize or corn. Make sure it's going to get cut. There we go. Alright well that's a good start. Uh, we're throwing it straight on the ground which it isn't but there we are that is working. So we'll just leave that there, turn it back off and we will go ahead and set up the course play course for it. So there is our course, it is a three headland course and then we're just going to have up and down rows that will probably work best rather than lands or anything like that trying to have to open a field up and run a forage wagon behind the uh, chopper, behind the forage harvester while we're just trying to open those up so if we go up and down we can just be on one side while it is uh, working its way across the field so that should work pretty well. Uh, would have been nice if these were a little bit more parallel but it's picked that up just so it can do it all in single passes rather than having a little piece up in the air. If it was up and down there'd be a little section in there it wouldn't like doing so. I can understand why it is there on an angle. Obviously we could have specified up and down uh, to be north south and then it would have done that but uh, this will work just fine. So now we've got that sorted out let's go and jump into one of the tractors. We'll sort out the auto drive side of things and then We'll set things up and going before we get back down to the yard and have to look at building the first of the silos. Now the Kubota's obviously the smaller of these two tractors, uh, which is why I've actually decided to use the New Holland, the T8 here, to create this course because I want to send this back to the yard first and therefore we will figure out how close we can get to the silos. Obviously the wheels are wider here, we've got a wider wheel base to deal with so if this can get close enough then no doubt the Kubota will be able to. What we're just going to do first though is record a little course that heads off here over towards the start of the field. We'll label this over here as field 203 weight so just park about there F203 weight and this will be where the tractors come to before they head off into the field. So bring this back around here and join up on the exit and that should be able to head on back down to the yard. You can see the course there heading on back out to the road. Close that off. Have to have the uh, auto drive menu up. Close that off there and we'll stop recording. So that should be our course for this end of the field. The other end we'll have to do once we've got the silo built and everything like that. But if we just pull up here beside we will jump in to the forage harvester we will get course play up and going and then we'll be able to see about getting this filled and head on down to the yard. All right here we are we are off and going just trying to drive along as close as we can behind the pickup and uh, not crash into the fences or anything like that a little bit confined with space in fact I feel like we we're going to get squeezed out there being in this slightly bigger tractor but the uh, Jaguar is doing a fantastic job of really spitting that forage out uh, that fresh maize and getting it into the forage wagon here. So we're just going to head on around, we're already 40% full so I don't know if we're going to get very far around the field at this rate uh, but for now we'll just uh, jump into a short little time lapse, get through to the end and then we will uh, head on down to the yard. Alright look at that, we're not even halfway round and we're already 100% full, 36,500 litres or just under. Now before we head off I'm just going to hop over here into the forage harvester and we need to specify in auto drive the F203 weight so that it knows any of the uh, incoming vehicles will be picked up there. Now that is a funny funny sound, I'm not sure quite what's going on there but there must be something with course players that are sitting in idle. Hopefully we're not going to hear that the whole way around, but let's head on back over, we will go and set the Kubota up on that course, even though we don't have an unload at the other end we can tell it to go to the main yard entrance, uh, the farmyard entrance, and once we have the course set up with the silo and everything like that, which we're going to go and do with this tractor, uh, hopefully this one will be full and back there anyhow. So we'll just jump over into there and set everything up and see if it will head off to the forage, where, uh, forage harvester. 
Well there we are, so it's uh, heading off this way, going to not even go around the edge of the field, it's going to go this way down to connect up with the forage wagon, which is, uh, or the forage harvester, which is fantastic, much more efficient and faster than if it had gone the uh, whole way around the edge of the field. So we'll leave this one running and we'll t get the other tractor back down to the yard and get our silo all up and ready to put some silage into. So back over here at the yard, and as all good yard builds progress, uh, some things need to change and adapt from what initial plans might have been, uh, much like building and everything like that. One thing to think about is this unloads here on the left, so our silo will need to have a trigger on the right hand side of it effectively, or the position of it we need to think about when we're driving in. Now I will go and have a look at the silos we've got, but for example this silo which is here, which is just a decorative one, I see this is the in tube which it gets blown up into the top with the blower and then on the ones we have access to actually have an outlet here on the back so we can't actually position them where I was going to should we just come around here I was going to position the silos in a similar position to that one backing onto the barn but we can't actually do that because the outlet is on the opposite side to the inlet so we are going to have to uh, actually have almost a drive around the silo and where I'm thinking about having it is just here in a line effectively so we can drive between the barn and that will have to be for the pickup and we'll have the unload on this side so uh, we'll see how that works we'll get everything built we'll need to take the pickup down and pick up the blower and grab that silage additive and uh, then we'll see how everything is going so before we do that let's go and put our silo down so just here under silos I was hoping to be able to use these American fermenting silos I have the one with the Canadian flag on it they have the built in blower but unfortunately as you can see in the bottom right corner here they only take uh, chaff, grass and hay to make our silo so that won't work with maize plus but what we do have if we scroll across here past all our silage bunkers is we have this fermenting silo pack which you can see we have three here which are all maize plus compatible one there which has the uh, blower on the right and has a built in outlet uh, the second one here which is a bit bigger same deal and then the third one here uh, which I haven't figured out I think the outlet just comes out on the uh, chute there where you don't actually need anything to put it in but we're going to go for this one here the $75,000 80 foot one which I think is going to give us the best capacity and as I was basically saying the idea is to put it somewhere like about here it's not going to get in the way of our drive around in fact it'll be on the other side from our main silos so I think if we go and put that, let's see, I might just twist it, uh, no we should be just about right there, hopefully just leave enough space, you can see the wheel tracks there as we've been driving tractors around uh, before we were setting things up, if we leave that right about there, let's put that down, there we are, and that will leave us enough space to be able to drive around on this side, yeah more than enough space to get through there with a forage wagon or a mixing wagon or something like that. And then on this side here is where we're going to put our blower. So we'll go and grab the pickup, we'll head on down to the shop and go and grab that blower and uh, we'll be back here soon. We'll just pull in here to the shop, we'll just park up and uh, we'll jump out and go and take a look at the blower and get the silage additive organised. So here is the blower, the New Holland F62B. And we we'll just jump in there, there's no configuration or anything like that. It is a simply a silage blower. We'll unload it into the side, the auger takes it. Big fan blows it and it'll come out the chute here and get pushed up into the top of the silo. So we'll buy that one. There we are, $13,200. And then if we get the, the silage additive, we'll just go across here. Now the default one is there, the Bond silage silage additive. Only 60 litres and it's $3,000. But uh, we've got this wonderful little mod that is in here. Silage additive drum, 50 litres and it's $500. So we'll go ahead and buy one of those and it will conveniently fit in the back of the pickup. So, with those both sorted out, let's go and get them loaded up and head on back down to the yard. Well, just about to pull back in and looks like the Kubota is back here now. So we've got uh, both our tractors here waiting and it looks like our auto drive course might have a little bit of an issue with the farm sign. So we might just have to make a little bit of a tweak there. Looks like we're getting caught up. But let's just pull this on over this way. Now we're gonna need to grab the John Deere because it does need to sit behind a tractor and actually well before we do that I'm actually just going to do a little bit of a landscaping and painting just to make this look a little bit more presentable and like it is a yard so in fact why don't we just uh, disconnect this here hook it onto the John Deere and uh, then we'll sort that out alright so we've just got the paint tool out here if we just run this pretty much straight along here do a little bit around the 
silo as well just to tidy it all up a bit of grass inside the building we can get rid of bring this over here because we're going to want this to be our drive-through area in fact this can come back down this way go underneath the tractor there we are and then we'll pick up as we come around this way pick up the rest of the uh rest of the course because uh obviously at some stage we'll be driving along here to go down to the straw barn and things like that and now if i just think about where we are heading next this is going to be our well we could just run our course around the course there but let's move it across a little bit hopefully we'll leave enough space here for our silos but the idea is that our silos will be in here on the right in this little island in here and we can adjust this again later but for now that should work pretty well for being able to run all our tractors around the outside there and when we do get some grain silos built they will sit in here on this little area here uh, and then the resupply silos we're going to be down this side so things like seed and fertilizer and the like where we can come in and buy those so i think that in fact if we just uh get rid of that in fact we'll just, we'll just walk around hopefully we've got enough space we might have to paint a little bit more there but there we go there is our silo got a nice little bit of course around there and run that down that way so let's go and get the, this hooked up we'll bring the blower over and then we'll try and create a little bit of a course for everything else to be able to get there and unload all right i think if we park the blower right about there we should be able to now go and hop into the tractor and see if we can come down and find the trigger there for the unload point and then we'll be able to see if we can get this auto drive to work or not i'll just jump into here We'll unlock auto drive or open up auto drive so you can see we've got a yard entry course which we just want to expand on for getting to the unload but before we do that I'm just going to drive along here and make sure we do get a trigger that we can get close enough with this tractor. Hmm that could be a little bit of a problem if we can't get close enough with this tractor and we're going to run into a little bit of strife there we go we've clipped the blower. there we go we were just close enough there very briefly for the trigger to be able to unload but uh i'm not sure if this is going to work or not with this tractor this could be a little bit of a problem because i don't think we can swap tractors out with anything else we have on the farm let's just tidy this up and have another go all right second time around let's see if we can get close enough to get it to unload no still no trigger and i really don't think i can go much closer to that hmm I'm gonna have to do a little bit of thinking here at the moment because I do know the John Deere will run this uh, but can we hook the blower up here to the T8 it seems a little bit excessive but we're kind of stuck for options right at this minute otherwise we might have to look at picking up a smaller older yard tractor or something like that one more go just just got the trigger there for a second so we can unload that there and that should start you can just see it going up the pipe there on to the uh, into the silo so we can get it to work if we start recording our auto drive course from here we'll give it another go and see if we can get around or not all right moment of truth we've finished the course I'm a little bit worried that auto drive as I thought might detect the collision there on the blower we've got the collision detection turned off as well so uh, I'm not quite sure what more we can do to get this to work all right so we've hopped into the Kubota we've set this up to head to the stave silo fill point which is what we'd set up and let's just see if we're going to get the same issue with the collision here or whether it is going to manage to get past so far so good actually this looks like it might actually be able to sneak past here next question Ah, uh, it missed the trigger. Well, that's no good either. I wonder if it missed the trigger because it was uh, not close enough, or did it miss the trigger? I can obviously manually get it there. Ah. Uh, I think the issue might be that the trigger is so small. If we just go back, see we're out of the trigger, in the trigger, out of the trigger. Course play or auto drive can't react quick enough to tell it to open the trigger it will tell it to stop and unload uh, but you can see there we don't actually have much distance between the two a little bit more with this tractor than with the other one but uh still not still not ideal 
So I'm just trying to figure out in my head what we can do. It's also incredibly slow to unload, that's only 10% out. What I think we might have to do with this, uh, we'll carry on doing this this way. Uh, we've obviously paid for the silo, we've spent well, probably 70 or 80 thousand dollars, maybe even more, 90 thousand dollars by the time you count the blower on this setup. Uh, so I think we need to persevere with it. But what I might do is I might still use the yard entry as the trigger point for the unload and then we might just have to come back and manually set them into the trigger each time which uh, obviously goes against what we're trying to do with auto drive unfortunately but looks like it could be the best way to solve this situation. I do know there is a couple of other blowers which were released recently on uh, Facebook across the Christmas break so I might even have a look and a play around and see if those that work a little bit better with triggers. They may be a bit more generous in their trigger than some of the others but uh, there we are. We are getting unloaded very very slowly though that's going to be our biggest bane if we're not even once around the field and in fact you can see how much of the field we've harvested to get two trailer loads uh, this is going to take a while so I think uh, we might be just gritting our teeth and bearing it for now we could always look at putting this into a normal silo and compacting it and then we could use the trucks but I think with all the other feed requirements we're going to need for Maze Plus, uh, I think we need to just focus on having this silo having one feed type and we'll be able to use the other silos for another feed type. Alright there we are, finally empty. So we'll send that back on its way to field 203, it can head back down and hopefully get the forage harvester back underway. We'll jump out and get this other forage wagon unloaded and uh, I think we'll just try and get into a little bit of a routine and uh, just get as much of this done as we can. Now I have just tweaked one setting, I changed the trigger distance to 50 metres rather than 25. But we're still going to have an issue here with the collision on this tractor unfortunately, which is uh, not going to solve or be solved by a trigger distance. Now I do know, there you go, we can drive past it, but are we going to get the trigger here on the wagon? Only just, and that's an even smaller window than the other one. So anyhow, let's get this one unloaded and uh, then we'll send them on their way and it is just going to have to become a bit of a manual process I think, the unloading and hopefully the work at the other end in the field, which we will go and get some capture and see some of, uh, will just be running as smoothly as it can and uh, this is our only little bit of hard work that we need to do. Now I was just looking while we were waiting for that trailer to unload and we do have a couple of options here we could look at buying we could pick up one of the Alice Chalmers here for 25 26 could even go for the 7000 series for 17 the only thing I don't like about this is the tinted windows and there's no option to get rid of those uh, but if we went for say the 8000 series two wheel drive or something like that we could give one of those a wheel and use that as a bit of a yard tractor uh, otherwise we do have the international of course here the 86 series uh, we could get another 40 series as well, only $55,000. So there's a few different options there. Uh, it's all money we don't have, of course, because we do need to buy, build some silos and sheds and many, many other things here for the field or for the farm. But uh, it is all different options. But there we are, that one's unloaded. Now, before, uh, before we head on back down, We'll go over and have a look here because I think we need to activate this as a production point. So we'll just come around here, I think there's a trigger in about here. There we are, you can see we've got our option here, we've got 72,000 litres of fresh maize. Uh, and fresh maize will make corn silage. You see there we've got different options we could do in here as well. High moisture corn, illage, whole crop, brewer's grain, we've got the haylage from grass and uh, semi-dry grass, I think that symbol is. We're doing the corn silage, so we're getting here and activate that. That's going to be one for one or a 100 for 100 and we should see any moment some maize silage pop up in there. There we go, one litre. So uh, we're going to let that carry on and ferment. We've got 72,000 litres in there already. Not sure how much that's going to take. Is it going to take about 300,000 litres? We're going to fill it up very quickly actually just thinking about how much there is in that field. So hopefully, hopefully that will chew through and uh, actually convert some of that reasonably fast otherwise. We're going to be uh, stuck with no storage and no space. But anyhow, the tractors are all on their way. Let's head on back down to the field. I was just thinking, considering how much we're yielding, I'm not going to worry about the additive because that's just going to further exacerbate our problems. I know we're leaving yield in the field effectively, but uh, I think, considering what we're going to have to deal with, I think that might be the better option this time around. So, let's get on back down there. So we've done another couple of loads out of the field, we've opened the headland up now so hopefully we're not going to have any more issues going around the outside of the field. Uh, we did have a few issues, or do have a few issues with the New Holland and the front axles on the 
forage wagons, which we'll go and have a look at in just a moment. They're unloading at the moment, but we just wanted to make sure the Kubota could get down here and go and find the forage harvester okay. I'm just hoping now that we've got everything all opened up, that we're not going to have any more issues. Uh, this one, heading back to the farm, tried to go across the train tracks. Uh, there is one setting I need to change, which is restricting the uh, unloader to the fields, uh, which we'll set up in just a minute, but we'll just let them get caught up here and underway and then we'll go back and check on the New Holland make sure it's all unloaded into the silo properly and uh, we'll see if we can get the front axles that we're having issues with a little bit more aligned than they are at the moment but there we are that worked out alright so just jump in here to the settings I want to change these both to yes which is the pathfinder which I think is the uh, combine in this instance and the unloader uh, is the trailer but uh, I'm not exactly sure or 100% sure or confident that those are the correct settings but there we are that is what we're going to go with for this time well this all seems to be going alright at this end so we'll jump back over and go and have a look at the other tractor all right well there you go they are empty as well which is good and we're just going to pull out of the way you can see there very clearly there is something wrong with those axles I don't know what it is, I don't know what's caused it or anything like that. I've seen photos and images of people having issues like this with gravity wagons and forage wagons and all sorts, but it's not one I have ever encountered before. So what I'm going to try and do to fix it in the first instance, I'm going to try and use Easy Dev and just teleport the tractor and the forage wagon to a new point because sometimes that will refresh the uh, refresh the model and everything like that. So we're just down here, we're just in the yard, so we might as well just try from there to there and we'll see what happens no that hasn't done anything with it so we're now going to detach and we're going to try and reset it so we're just going to set ourselves up a store deliveries point here we'll put that down there and we'll come into the map zoom in and hopefully find that uh, trailer though everything is in the way now so we're not going to be able to see it let's just come in here and see if we can turn off some of these points uh, trailers were turned off, there we are. However, I'm not able to pick it, probably because we're standing too close. There we are, we've managed to find it now, moved away. So let's reset that and uh, we'll go and see what happened. There we are, look at that. Just like sending it to a mechanics. So the reset of the tool has uh, reset it effectively back to or reset the model uh, which will hopefully fix that issue fingers crossed we don't have it again but anyhow we'll turn this back on to auto drive send it off to the field and we'll go and see probably the Kubota I imagine is full and hopefully on its way back so I think let's just ride along here with the New Holland on a little bit of a time lapse for a minute or two or at least for one round we'll get it to the field get it unloaded and then we'll uh, see how everything goes on the other end. Again I'm a little bit confused here as to why we are trying to exit through the train tracks. Uh, doesn't seem right, I'm a little bit a little bit puzzled. There must be something going on here that I can't comprehend or can't get my head around uh, because both tractors have done it now, seem to get to a point there and they think this is the smartest way to get out of the field. Uh, anyhow, no harm done. What it does mean though, depending on what's going to happen now, is uh, that we're going to have to go and unload the other tractor because the Kubota will be waiting and this guy is now probably going to do a U-turn he's going to go and try and drive through the field try and get back to where he needs to be onto the course no wonder he broke an axle anyhow we'll let them carry on doing their thing and uh, we'll go and do ours well as if to exacerbate the issue 
things just are not going well for us today. We've got the same issue here with this tractor, with the axles, however this one doesn't have the horsepower to be able to pull it like the New Holland does, so it's really struggled to even get here. So I don't, again, don't know what's caused it, don't know why it's done it, but it has. So I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use some easy dev to again reset it and uh, then we will have to refill it again. It also drove off with only 35,000 litres and not a complete full, it's 100% full, it's only 96% full. So again, don't know what caused that, uh, just something that's happened. Alright, well we've reset it, we've topped it up using easy dev again, so we're back to pretty much where we were. Maybe 400 litres better off than we were, but there we are. We we'll get this one unloading, you just see the New Holland has just departed and is heading back down to the field or is on its way back there so hopefully it will get back without any more dramas. Now I was just looking here at our silo, you can see we've already got, well by the time this one's full in there we're going to have about 210,000 litres and it's not converting it into silage very quickly at all, it only does 360 cycles a month so I think we might have to go and give that a little bit of a tweak in the XML in the mod. Bump that up just a little bit because I don't think that we're going to get much maize in there into the silo considering what we've pumped in there. And you look at the size of the silo and zoom a long way back to find it uh, you'd think it'd take a little bit more than what it actually could. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe this is how much these actually take and how quickly it takes for them to ferment or anything like that. But uh, it is what it is, we will just have to make do with it. But uh, we've not even done two headland passes yet, so we're not going to have much done. And it does mean maybe we need to let it mature and uh, we'll chop the rest of it once it is just normal corn and we can make it into just some normal maize. I need to do a little bit more study into our different maize plus uh, feed mixes and what we might need for our different animals. But let's let this one carry on emptying. Once it's done, we'll send it back to the field and go back over there. Well, everything's running back over here as it should be which is good I was a bit nervous I might come back and find something parked somewhere or a train that's caught a tractor or who knows what could have happened so I think while it's all going smoothly let's jump into a little bit of a montage and put that together and uh, we'll wait until we've got both forage wagons full and we'll run over and get them emptied out and uh, we'll just get a bit of this done I think we're going to fill our silo before we get everything emptied out though so uh, that might be our limiting factor for today's work
Well, we've started on our up and down rows here, and things haven't, well, they have got better, but they also haven't got better. Uh, I'll figure it out. I think what happens with the axles is we're going to get crashed into here by the uh, water drive tractor. What happens is when they start backing up because of the way the pivots and everything are on these trailers, all the drawbars are, they want to back up when the forage harvester turns around at the end, and it doesn't like doing it. it just doesn't like it, does it makes a mess. And I think that is what is causing all our issues. When they back up, it twists the wheels and they get all turned out of order. So I think we've had it about three times now, and you can see this one here is not looking much better either. I think we're going to have the same issue in just a moment, which is why we're struggling to pull this uh, pull this wagon. But we're going to persevere. We're going to get it full. Our uh, silo is pretty much full. So we can't actually fit any more in there anyhow. Alright, looks like the uh, auto drive is going to take over there with the New Holland, so we might as well, we'll go and get this one emptied out, because I don't think we're going to get this whole load into the silo anyhow. So we'll leave them to carry on, and uh, we'll go and get it dumped. Alright, well we made it all the way back over here, we're going to get this all unloaded. I'm not sure how much space there is left in the silo, not a lot I don't think, but we'll just pop around here. We should be able to pop over and have a look. There you go, 365,000. I don't know how much more we're going to fit in there, whether we're going to fit all of this wagon in or not. We've made almost a 1,000 litres, which is a positive, I suppose. But let's just see how much of this goes in there, uh, and whether this will be our last load. I think it probably will be. All right, well, it looks like that is all it's going to take for now. We must be pretty much full. Let's go and have a quick look around here again. See what's in there. We are 375,000 litres now, there is about 2,000 litres that can sit in the blower so that will just keep on going as it gets used up. Uh, but there we are, 375,000 litres of fresh corn in there to be converted into some silage. Now we'll leave the other tractor to carry on and uh, run for a little bit longer, we'll get that over here. Uh, let's just actually have a look in the map and see how much of that field we got harvested. And there you go, we've certainly got through it further than I thought we would. Uh, there's still quite a bit in there, but the three headland passes did take out a decent chunk. But there's probably still another couple of hundred thousand litres in there, I would imagine. So uh, we're not going to get it obviously all in here today. And we'll have to decide whether we leave it to try and fill this up again in the future, or uh, whether we try and chop it when it's uh, dried off a little bit further and make some different sort of silage off it. I'll have a look in Maze Plus and we'll make a bit of a decision then. Let's just jump over to the field and go and see how those guys are going. Ah, Alright, there we go. We are 100% full and we've got another broken axle. Who would have thought? I, I really think this might be the last time that we use these forage boxes. We may have to look for another solution. So if you've got anything you've used, any suggestions or options out there that we should try, hit me up. I'd be eager to find out and try something different that uh, might not have quite the issues this or that these ones have had. They're a nice looking mod and they work well every way, except for those front wheels, which is just a little bit frustrating. But we'll let this tractor head on back over to the yard. We'll go and shut off the harvester and, uh, well, probably wrap things up here. All right, well, there's the tractor coming in to the yard. So, like I said, this is going to be a good spot to wrap this episode up. Uh, it's just been one of those days, really. Everything that could go wrong just about has, and what could go right, well, there's only been a few little bright spots in amongst everything else. The silos worked out perfectly, the blower and everything actually went really, really well. I was a little bit nervous about using that. Obviously the course play with the forage harvester went really well. And even the auto drive course worked uh, reasonably well. It was just a little bit frustrating. We couldn't get that trigger to work there with the uh, with the blower. Um, but that's all right. That might be something we can have a play around and see if we can come up with a different solution to get it to work in the future. Next time... What I think we might be doing is either a little bit more of the farm build, maybe get some sheds put up around the other side so we can get some of this equipment put away and tidied up, or uh, possibly taking out the uh, versatile and a plough and heading on over. I want to get some grass planted because we do need to think about what we're going to do for some grass silage, grass hay, those kind of things in the future. So uh, it could be a couple of things to do around that. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that episode and I will catch you in the next one.